Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer. He's on the East Coast. We've got a pretty nice slate here on Wednesday in the NBA for us to choose from in these best bets that we're bringing you in this video. Also have play up props up in a separate video, so make sure to subscribe to that page and continue to follow along with us each and every weekday of this regular season. We're coming off of a pretty good Tuesday. Uh, still went about five and four there on the night. Uh, a slight plus units up there as well. So we'll continue to trudge along here this NBA season. Do want to make sure that you head to the lines.com real quick as well. Check out all the great content that we're putting up on the site for the NBA and NFL right now. Also, you can use that odds finder tool to make sure that you're getting the best juice available to you from all of these bets and props that you are making in the NBA this season. Nate, let's go ahead and run right into your first best bet for tonight. Yeah, here we go. Pacers at Bucks. Once again, a total near 260, just like the in-season tournament. Um, but my angle here is to just take the Pacers um, and actually tease it up to plus 10 and a half. I mean, plus six and a half is fine. They're live for the upset here. Um, they, but I mean, we're right around key numbers in the NBA. So I like it at 10 here. I think the Pacers are not going to get blown out mainly uh, because there's a discrepancy in terms of depth that the Pacers just have much more depth than the Bucks, and they'll be able to to, to combat uh, whatever whatever the starting lineup does and, and keep it close. So my dance partner here is also my second best bet is the Pelicans. Tease them down from minus 7.5 to 3.5 at Washington. I think they can easily cover that 7.5, but again, get you below a bit of a key number and just a little more safety. If you want the, want the safer bet, I mean, if you want to go for for bigger better odds here, uh, <clears throat> maybe just take the pe- Pacers with the Pelicans money line. Mix it mix it however you want. But the point is, yeah, Pacers lead the league in bench scoring, and it's fifty points per game on the road, which is even better. Milwaukee slightly below league average, only thirty two at home, and we saw that in, the, in their in season tournament meeting here. Indy outscored them thirty six twenty two in the second quarter to just completely get back in that game. Then. They were in it the entire time. Of course, Halliburton did his thing with the 15-0 assist-to-turnover game. Just another virtuoso performance. The Pacers won that game despite shooting 7 for 33 from 3, which is unbelievable for a team that's so dependent on threes. I I mean, their defense is actually, when when they bring it, their defense is good. And, and, I mean, you look at their numbers and say, well, they just play 125 all all the time. But clearly, when when motivated by that tournament, they were bringing it on that end. And Aaron Neesmith is a really good defender. He did a pretty good job on Giannis. Giannis is going to get his numbers. But the fact that he's out there, that they have Benny, Benny Matz, they can throw off the bench. Um, they have they have versatile guys to deal with this. You know, the Bucks got a, a, a rare spike game from Chris Middleton in that tournament game. They did not have a good assist-to-turnover ratio. The Pacers match up pretty well. I mean, they've won now three straight against the Bucks with Halliburton active. The one they lost without him, and by the way, it took a 51-point near triple-double from Drew Holiday to get there. Uh, this season, he's averaging 28 and 12 and a half is Halley against the Bucks, the, and, the, and the Pacers have just been covering on the road because we continue to undervalue them a little bit. They've straight up won five of their last six roadies. They only have one road loss with Halliburton, this year by over 10 points. And that took a Tyrese Maxey 50 piece where he's just out of his mind. Bucks are four and eight against the spread at home. And in their last seven in particular, allowing 122 a game. So if you get into this kind of up and down game with, with the Pacers, they can, they can just beat you as we saw last time these teams met because Halliburton right now is the best orchestrator in that kind of free flowing game. And, and again, I think the Pacers have more bodies to throw at them in terms of depth. I mean, the only thing that you would come up with for why you don't like the Pacers to be able to cover, especially double digits, is like some weird narrative of of the the Bucks are going to try harder. I, like it, it, everything matches up to these teams being a lot more evenly matched in a regular season setting. Plus, um, Giannis and and Dame still getting things together. They're still not there. For what it's worth, I'm not worried about the Bucks. I still think that when the playoffs come around, they're going to be a legitimate contender. They just they have some things to figure out because their margin for error on offense is now a lot smaller than it ever was when you have Drew Holiday in there just hawking the three-point line and really allowing everybody else to play that drop coverage defense. So <laughs> I'm somehow scared of going under 259 and a half points in an NBA game. It's dumb, 
but I, I would feel like a complete, I don't know, like it was a waste of time to try to be to be slick with an under bet in this game when there's probably going to be plenty of points and 250 is a pretty reasonable total for these two teams with how much they can't really defend each other. So let me just go into my um, my first bet and just continue to talk about it through that lens, which is a player prop uh, same game parlay with the two best players in this game. Yes, I said the two best players in this game, including Tyrese Halliburton and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Those are the two best players in this game. I really wish somebody would come at me about that. But more importantly, 30 plus for Giannis uh, and 25 plus points and 10 plus assists for ha- uh, Halliburton. I'm honestly not scared of Giannis 10 plus boards. If you want to throw it in there as well, he's going to be down there for the majority of the game. So most rebounds that come out on both ends of the floor are going to be a potential rebound chances for him. And that's what we look at here with the way that he's dominated this team forever now, but especially this season when the Pacers and Rick Carlisle have completely sold out and just gone, we know what we are and we're just going to lean in hard and not worry about the the detriment of not playing good paint defense or not getting back on defense, et cetera. So um, in his last uh, five versus Indy, he's gone over and four or five, Giannis. The only reason he didn't get 30 in one of those games was he only played 27 minutes and had five fouls, also had 26 points in those 27 minutes. So give him another three minutes and he's getting over the 30. Um, but really this year, especially, man, uh, 45 a game, 29 points in the paint per game. Uh, he's already leading the league in points in the paint per game at like 22, which is absurd. But now he's at 29 against this team. So it's even more available for him whenever he wants to get into the paint. As we know, there is not a good matchup. God bless you, Aaron uh, Neesmith. Good luck, because this is not going to be a good matchup for you once again. Slowing down Giannis might mean keeping him to 34. So that's still where, where he's at. 15 and a half free throw attempts in the two games that he's played against them. Um, getting to the line more than 30 times now in, in both of those games combined. And and also the second chance points, right? That's where you also look. The rebound chances are up to uh, 22 22 in the first game, 24 in the second game for Giannis. So that's why I also say like the rebound chances are there. The offensive rebound chances are there big time, which is why the putbacks will be there for him. It's all like whatever down low, any stat relevant to that Giannis will own it in this game for Tyrese dude has averaged 28 potential assists versus the bucks in two games this season. That's absurd. Uh, I'm not worried about the 10 assists for him. That's how you get 15 assists and no turnovers is you just keep putting the ball in the hands of your players play after play after play in a position to score without even turning it over. Uh, It's absolutely incredible what he's done. And the game has slowed down for him. And he's what, 23, 22, like how, how quickly this game has been under his control every time he's out there is absolutely wild. Um, The points. Yeah, he does rely on the three point shooting a bit. Great news against this Milwaukee Bucks team who continues to give up fast break points and continues to give up three pointers uh, at a very alarming rate because they started playing that drop D a lot more. And since they started playing that drop D after a meeting that Brooke Lopez had where he called the team together and goes, look, I can't be hedging on screens. I'm Brooke Lopez. I play drop defense so that when people come into the lane, they're scared of coming into the lane. Well, that means that Drew, without Drew Holiday, like I said, on the wing, uh, really keeping everybody out there on the three point line in check because he can just be a one man three point defense almost um, right now they're in, in big trouble with Dame taking that spot over. So much more to come for Halle baby uh, and Giannis should be a walk in 30 in this matchup. Yeah. If you think Dame is better than Halliburton, you have not watched any basketball this season um, and probably, you know, living in the past a little bit here. I, I mean, he, he's going to cook him again. Uh, he's cooking everybody. This is a nice way to play this game and and not deal with the total, but just accept the fact that it's going to be around 250 and you don't want to sweat it one way or the other, like depending on the number of free throws or how close it is down the stretch. Yeah. But just say like, look, this is going to be another game environment where Halliburton, the 28 assists, potential assists is mind blowing. Like maybe we should go 25 and 12 or 20 and 12 because uh, we actually had to sweat out. When we hit this same game parlay last last time they met, right, he hit a three at the very end to get 25 points and the three threes, and it was kind of a sweat in that regard. So maybe we want 20 and 12 instead of 25 and 10. But anyway, you dice it, yeah, should be plenty of points for Halliburton uh, against a a pretty bad defense as the Bucks continue to, like, learn the, a new defensive scheme on the fly. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, going back to the Pels at Washington – uh, I mean, the Pelicans are not a great road team, but this is a great matchup for them. I think they can cover seven and a half. Interested in the money line 
parlay and under 245 if you can get it where it, I mean at, at FanDuel they give it to you where it opened it's been bet down a little bit because that Wizards offense is going to struggle so maybe it's under 115 for the Wizards uh I mean this Pelicans defense if they can just shut down the Kings three times in a row and their athletic guards I don't know I don't see how like Jordan Poole and Tyus Jones are going to do much against a team that's that's still kind of on extended rest I mean they played Monday beat a good Wolves team but I, I mean, they hadn't played since Thursday since they were embarrassed, blown off the floor and and got a little extended rest uh, after that. And they're four and one against the spread on, on extended rest this year. Also four and one to the under Zion is questionable. Uh, I don't really, you know, mind either way if he if he sits because his his defense has been so bad. And I think, again, the Pelicans will be so good at just containing what the Wizards do well, which isn't much. Uh, just shutting shutting them down if if he's not out there. But if he is out there, I mean, there's definitely no good defensive matchup for him. And he clearly seemed motivated by all the all the uh, criticism over the weekend about his shape and his performance in the in this tournament. Came out and roasted a very good Wolves defense. So I mean, the Wolves Wizards. Let's just recently <laughs> seven straight losses since their home opener. Now one and five against the spread as home dogs. I mean, if we're gonna give Orlando. Minus 11, minus 12 in the same spot. Why are the Pels only minus seven? Like, is it's sort of a same situation. Uh, I mean, they've been a little more inconsistent, but I, they, they have more talent, I would say. And, and there may be a tougher defensive matchup on paper. But yeah, again, looking at the Wiz, I mean, they have a 129 defensive rating in at home this year. They give up the second most pain points, the most second chance points by far, most assists. They, they're one cover was a loss to Philly, which just doesn't seem to care about road games against putrid Eastern Conference teams. Uh, by the way, they play the Pistons tonight, if you if you want to game that either way. And their only loss other than that by less than 13 was to Charlotte, which is still a seven-point loss. But, you know, any playoff team that comes into Washington seems to win easily. Uh, so I would expect the Pelicans to handle business here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Zion is questionable, and that doesn't necessarily impact how I think they're going to play. Be- I, although this has been the first year that like the, the 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 splits without Zion are pretty noticeable. That said, like he is the ideal matchup for this team. Um, anybody who's just going to sit down low and do their damage down there uh, would be a very good bet in this game. But there's nothing anywhere on the floor that's going to stop what even Brandon Ingram wants to do and with with cj back you, you do expect this offense to continue humming with, with especially when cj and brandon ingram are out there together uh and, and you can even throw joval as well with the uh the, his ability to pick and roll uh with cj I, I i love their offense um i'm not i'm not scared of the points um the magic were at home i believe against the wizards and that they're just like a, the third best team in the league if they are playing at home just overall so that was a big part of the 11 but the the seven and a half is still it's still fairly low. Uh, we'll see if Washington decides to randomly ramp it up, but I, I don't know that there's much they can do against a NOLA team that is definitely starting to put it together on both sides of the ball. So let me finish with an under on a player prop. Uh, just remind everybody, our player prop record's a little bit better, and I'm going to go get a W here because I think Nick Richards' PRA on the Charlotte Hornets is too high. Try to contain your excitement with this sexy, sexy bet. But Nick Richards, under 20.5 points, rebounds, and assists combined – just for those who need to know, Nick Richards is the backup center on the Charlotte Hornets for those not tuning in to league pass for Charlotte Hornets games this season. Mark Williams is the starter. He's doubtful, almost guaranteed not to play. And he's going up against a Bam autobio list Miami Heat team, which is why I still think we're getting some value. Now, I will say the value dropped because they just played a few nights ago, these two teams, two nights ago, and Bam missed that game. And Nick Richards had a PRA of 23 and a half in that game. Kind of mad that I missed that, um, but we didn't really have the full lineups available to us when we were recording that day. So now that we know that Mark Williams is not likely to play and Bam is definitely out, this is still too high. Um, Bam has missed four straight games, so it's easy to assume that Miami is just going to start giving up stuff to centers because when Bam is in there, they allow the third fewest points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game to opposing centers because Bam is an all-team defender. In the last seven days where Bam has not played at all in any of their four games, they are number two at limiting points and rebounds, and number one, at limiting assists to opposing centers. So things haven't gone down. They haven't played Joel Embiid, and they haven't played Nikola Jokic, so I get it, but they've still played four teams without their best player on defense um, and, and still been able to limit them because it's team rebounding. It's Spo, 
it's heat culture. As much as you want to say it, you hate it. It's heat culture. And they come in and Kevin Love is boxing dudes out. And so is Thomas Bryant, who has a still uh, is contributing to the second highest defensive rebound percentage for this team. And Nick Richards is not a part of this offense. Let's be very clear. If Nick Richards scores points, it's putbacks. His usage rate does not climb above 15%. It's normally closer to 11% in most of these games. He has to rely on second chance points, and they're just not there for them. The times that he's gone over this prop, he did it against teams that were the worst offensive rebounding teams, uh, excuse me, defensive rebounding teams in the league. And that's because of, like I said, he, he relies on those second chance points. His his numbers don't jump without Mark Williams in there because Nick Richards isn't really good enough to play against the starting lineup. Mark Williams was playing against the starting lineup. Now you put Nick Richards in, you give him a few more minutes. So he's up to about 26 minutes a game as opposed to 17 or so. You give him, uh, he still scores fewer points and a few more rebounds. So it's still the same stat line that he puts up when Mark Williams is in there. Because like I said, it's a lot easier to bang with, you know, Omer Yurt 7 versus Walker Kessler, for instance, right? Just thinking of backup and, and starting center combos. So uh, with that, that third, uh, th that defensive rebound percentage still where it is for Miami. And the fact that they still limit centers, I think 20 and a half PRA for Mr. Richards is just far too many. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily a, a skilled big here. Uh, doesn't doesn't really have a bag, like you said, and I don't expect Miami to lapse defensively just because Bam is out. Um, you know, Orlando Robinson's been doing a fine job there. You like under for this game at 223 in general. If that's the case, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a grind you down heat home game uh, where there's not a lot of stats to go around. And therefore, yeah, I don't think a, a backup center who's thrust into the starting role is really going to put up a, a big line yeah, for sure. So it, it'll probably drop even further, to be honest, uh, the next time Mark Williams is out, if he doesn't get it in this one, but that is all the time we have for you in our best bets today. Continue to follow along, subscribe to that page and check out the play of props that we have up for you as well. Until we see you next. Happy betting. Stop.